Welcome to Decades of Horror in the 1970s. When the red moon sets and the sun rises in the west, two monsters will appear to save the people. This is episode 134, recorded February 24th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rotten, and this podcast is about horror movies released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host, Jeff Moore, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this groovy, gory, wondrous, and influential decade. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, sir, how are you doing? I'm good. Have you ever spent any time in a black hole? I, I can't answer that well, question. Yeah, that's a um, personal question. <laughs> I will get in a lot of trouble. All right, also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and say it with me, all around a nice guy. Nice guy. guy. Thank you. <laughs> I've been in a financial black hole now and again, but it was no kind of fun. No kind of fun. Yeah. You, you doing all right, sir? Doing all right, yeah. All doing right. Well. Also joining tonight is... Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host, decades of horror, the classic era. Chad Hunt, how you doing, sir? I am awesome, awesome, awesome. You are, you are awesome. Wow, I, I I will back you up on that claim. Good. So I thought I was, I was going to have to hurt somebody if you did. Well, you know, <laughs> no argument here. The check is in the mail. All right, <laughs> what are we doing tonight? We are going to be covering Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla from 1974. I guess we're doing this just in time for Godzilla versus Kong to come out in theaters and on HBO Max on the exact same day. They say uh, it, it's going to be around that time. I maybe before, maybe slightly after, but uh, yeah, you know, you, you, when, when, that happens, when that happens, we got to do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's take a look at the card. And um, after we do that, what we'll do is give our, you know, when we first saw the film back in the day, or was it last week? That's what we're going to answer. And then we're going to chat about the film and then wrap things up at the end. And I think we might have some uh, feedback at the end, if time permits. All right. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla was released March 21st, 1974 in Japan. It made its way in March of 77 to the U.S., and it was called Godzilla vs. the Cosmic Monster, among other titles, but that's pretty amazing. I do remember <laughs> that artwork. That artwork that's mm -hmm. in the um, poster there that you, you're seeing online, is yeah. they used that for Famous Monsters as well. And it was, they did. It was I have that amazing. issue. Yeah, yeah uh, director Jun Fu. <laughs> Fukuda, I'm not even going to pronounce the names in the cast. The dialogue, the time, the tagline is: "See the mighty Godzilla in a fight to the death with his bionic double," which, of course, uh, you know, Bionic Man was big, the six million dollar man. So that's what that was all about. But mm. listen to the synopsis, and it just gets crazy. Ape-like aliens build a robotic Godzilla to destroy Japan, and the true Godzilla may not be powerful enough to destroy it. <sighs> Yeah. Ape like aliens. No, <laughs> you damn I'm gonna, dirty apes. I must yeah. just say, Planet of the Apes was really popular. In yeah. Obviously, <laughs> and partly it, because it had good masks, which this one certainly doesn't have. Well, there are some half masks that aren't in that picture that look a little better, but uh, that one looks a little cheesy. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, this movie. I don't even know. I mean, the titles alone. Um, you know we. It was also called, uh, oh, my God. Well, the Bionic Monster is also what it had, right? Cosmic Monster, oh, yeah. Bionic Monster yeah. as well. Um, they were going to get sued by uh, Bionic Man and Bionic Woman, folks. That's yeah, pretty yeah. bogus, if you ask me. I don't think they own the, the rights to the word Bionic, but it's just one of those nuisance things. It's like, whatever, so he's a cosmic monster now. But uh, it's just This is one of the last of the initial run yeah. of Godzilla films. What is that called? The Showa Age? The Showa. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. yeah. Showa era, yeah. Yeah, and uh, last one is which one, Bill Monaghan? Terror of Mechagodzilla. Terror mm -hmm. of Mechagodzilla. I guess Mechagodzilla comes back for that one. Oh, yes. Um, I, yeah. I think we all loved Godzilla films in the 70s. Uh, this one was made for, what, $1.2 million? And then it made somewhere between 3 and 20 depending on 
where you look. Um, yeah. But it made it made money. But as you know, uh, if you are familiar with uh, Godzilla lore, you know Toho was experiencing dwindling returns. Right uh, mm-hmm. for this, it was getting. Um, they were putting less and less money into it, and of course, getting less and less money back. And uh, Toho was. You know, we've covered a lot of the films in the seventies, and they were just kind of like Hammer, reaching out, trying to figure yeah. out how to survive. Um, so there's a thing, but let's, let's dive into this. Is this is the funny wrestling Godzilla? That's the way I kind of think of it. Uh, less so here, less kitty here. You know, yeah, uh, a little there. more serious than Megalon Godzilla, yeah, versus yeah, Megalon yeah, or Godzilla yeah. Monster Island, or Son of Godzilla, and all the other ones yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, but it. Um, it couldn't get away from how campy the fights were, but I don't know. As a kid, I kind of loved that, right? All right, so let's go around, and we're going to talk about when we first saw this film. And Chad Hunt, you are up first, since this was your pick. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first time I saw this, first of all, I saw the trailer for this during an episode of Sanford and Son. Did you? When I, when I was a kid, you yeah. remember that? I remember it very clearly because I. That's the first time I ever heard of it, and that's the first time I was um, introduced to this robot Godzilla. That I was like, "Oh my god!" I, you, know, you know, being a huge Godzilla fan, you know, this was uh, this was top priority in my life uh, as a 12, 13 year old <laughs> kid. Yeah. You know, and um, so and so I watched the newspapers. It ended up showing in a little mom and pop theater. I think I've talked about this before where I've seen Inframan and, and a couple of those, those type movies, but they showed weird, just stuff that wasn't released, you know, like nationwide type type films. So I walked the three miles to go see this movie and uh, just thought it was the absolute best thing I have ever seen in my entire kaiju uh, watching <laughs> career as a kid. I, I just loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And um, the idea of a robot Godzilla, and that's another reason I, I, I chose this this movie, is there's a lot of theories going around about the new yes. uh, one going out that, yes. that this might be Mecha Godzilla, and it could follow that same plot line as, as this movie. Um, so, yeah, uh, um, I watched it again for, for the podcast just a couple of days ago. And just had a blast. Just had an absolute blast watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's cheesy. And unlike Bill said, it's a little more serious than the, the previous two, uh, Megalon and, and a couple of those. And um, But the it was a little bit more serious story-wise with, with the, uh, um, the characters and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, and and don't forget the fake Planet of the Apes uh, <laughs> uh, aliens that came at the end. I, as a kid, I you couldn't tell me that that sucked at all. No, you could not tell me that that movie sucked for anything. And uh, immediately went out and got the monsters, uh, famous monsters with the mm-hmm. uh, that artwork on the cover. Um, just this is one of my favorite. Favorite uh, any of the Mecha Godzillas and around around that area are some of my favorite uh, Godzilla uh, films. Uh, yet cheesy, but I sure do love them, and I and yeah. I love this one too. Yeah, you got to remember this is before like Transformers for us, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the closest thing we got was like was it uh, Johnny Sacco and the yeah right. whatever that was. I mean, and you got to remember too, you had Six Million Dollar Man, Bionics, and yes. that's how I saw this film. Uh, marketed as the bionic monster and i was like oh, yes yes so that was a biggie for me too yep all right bill mulligan sir when did uh, you first see i i i'm sure I, I was on tv and it probably would have been the late 70s as soon as it came on i think i actually saw terror of mecha godzilla first which may be one reason why i prefer it there's a few reasons why i prefer that one but I, i've always liked mecha godzilla as a as an adversary for Godzilla, just like I liked King Kong Escapes for Mecha Kong, um, I like the Mecha stuff. It's it's fun. 
but you know, my relationship with Godzilla goes back a long way. It's one of my earliest um, me monster memories watching Godzilla movies on TV. And mm -hmm. I've always been a Godzilla fanatic. My wife and I, the first movie we ever watched together was Godzilla versus Mothra, the new version. And on our wedding cake, we had Godzilla wearing a top hat and Mothra wearing a veil. No, oh, nice. <laughs> her brother-in-law tricked them up. So if you walk by them, they would roar. We, we had our reception at a Chinese restaurant. And uh, so, okay, let me just stop talking about the movie for a second, just because um, this is weird. So I've been doing a, a spring cleanup in, in various rooms in my house, desperately needed. And I found something that I hadn't seen for a while. And it was really bothering me that I'd lost this um, early on in our relationship, somewhere in the mid to late 90s my wife went to a convention and people, you know, a comic book convention and they were, people were selling artwork and everything. And she got me an original piece of art of Godzilla. Does this look familiar, Chad? Yeah, I did it. Yeah, you sure did. Um, Where'd you get that? She got it for me. Oh my God. And this is, I, I get, I'm guessing this is, it, it, there's one signature up here. It's 1995. Yeah. That, that's George's Jante. He, uh, he ended up doing a lot of the, um, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer comics, and and I, well, I love that drawing. This, this yeah, he and I were pitching. Uh, Godzilla. He and I were pitching uh, a Godzilla series to Dark Horse at the time. Which oh, they went God, on to I do one anyway. But, but uh, yeah, so this yeah, is beautiful, cool, very cool stuff. But yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm looking at this like, oh, good, I haven't seen this picture in a while. And then I look at the signature, I'm like, wait a minute, what? So <laughs> this was this was years, many many years before I met you. Yeah, very. How, that small, was back in how the, small a world do we live in? Exactly. That this is even a possibility here. That had to be back in the late eighties. Yeah, and, and it's early nineties. Yeah, it's proof that what we're saying about Chad being an amazing comic book artist, we're not just blowing smoke here. This is some beautiful stuff. I've always thank loved you. this version of Godzilla, that cat-like face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so thank you for this. Very cool. Oh man, that's it's, very cool, Bill. Thank it's you. Now going up on the wall where it was supposed wow. to. be. That's yeah. that's a landmark. Yeah, what a surprise! Wow. Is, yeah, a real a real. What show. a surprise! Yeah, and um, but you know that Godzilla has always been a big part of my life. Uh, I just I I love the series, even the lesser films. Godzilla versus Megalon. I'm looking right at you. That's right, Jerry Chandler. I said Godzilla versus Megalon, <laughs> not one of the better ones. Oh. But I love them all, and this one is fun. It's fun watching it now. Yes, it's cheesy. And I, I prefer the the more modern ones or the older ones, the ones in the middle where things were kind of, you know, like you say, they were cutting a lot of stock footage. You could see that the costumes were sometimes literally falling apart. Whenever they're in the water scene, they're always using an older costume that can barely mm -hmm. hold itself together. Mm -hmm. um, you see the shortcuts that they're taking. But this was, this was fun. I didn't see a whole lot of stock footage here. It had to be new because Mecha was mm -hmm. Mecha Godzilla was new, and man, he's a cool monster. When they start fighting and he lets loose, mm -hmm. this guy's like a, a Swiss Army knife of weaponry. <laughs> and you legit feel bad for Godzilla, and this one has a lot of blood. Yeah, we're not used yeah. to seeing Godzilla movies. You know, Gamera sure bleeds like a pig, but uh, Godzilla with blood shooting out, and breaking poor Anguirus's jaw. I mean, ah, oh, that was awful, mm -hmm. traumatizing as a child. So it's 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 silly and and everything, but it's not as silly as it could be, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's no Jet Jaguar, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. I like Jet Jaguar. <laughs> there you uh, go. You and Jerry. Or when uh, when did you first see Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla from nineteen? I just saw this. <laughs> I just saw it. Um, I'm like I've said before. I'm I'm uh, negligent in my. Uh, kaiju education uh -oh. um Fight but <laughs> not, not to say i'm not teachable uh <laughs> but i can understand uh what the deal was with with uh chad because for me i was like this is this would be great for kids and <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? And so, what are you trying to say? It's, uh, well, it just takes a while to get the flavor of it, you know. I mean, these guys they have their own feeling to it. And literally the you talked about uh Doc, you said something about it being the you think of it as a wrestler. He was definitely they were very anthropomorphic, more so than at least in the earlier ones that I've seen, where I mean 
Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla both do like a little, you know, one of those little, <clears throat> you know, like when they're <laughs> frustrated or mad or getting ready to yeah, really yeah. turn it on. It just it just looks like a like uh, like a guy from a, uh, uh, a kung fu or martial arts movie or something almost. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, but I did love the robot just because. Oh Lord, Mecha Godzilla, the 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 rocket fingertips and the mm -hmm. the, the uh, uh, well rockets on his feet or, or whatever it was on his feet. Um, I love the evil alien leader. Everything you know, you're all just fools. We're going to take you. There's no way can you stand up to us. Oh my god! Oh my god! Godzilla beat my god! Yeah. <laughs> um, you but, cannot stand up to my CB radio. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but also. Uh, <laughs> Holy cow! They know how to blow stuff up, yeah. and they blowed it up real good. Holy <laughs> cow! I, I mean, explosions. I spent most of my time watching the explosions and the. Yeah. I, I I got a little tired of the. I didn't like the monster sound in this one. It just was irritating. It didn't sound. I don't know. It well, sounded, it was, they, I think they made it different on purpose so it would differentiate between the real Godzilla. Yeah. And, right. And, the real Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla, yeah. And I'm sorry, sorry, Doc. I didn't. The whole King Caesar thing seemed a little silly. I know oh, I'm a bad person. Yeah. The way his well, ears he, would go right up. That was so adorable. Well, he well, turned out yeah. to be a big chicken shit. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought he. That's what I thought. I'm like, this is a guy that's going to save the world, and he. he yeah. No, he's good. hiding behind the rocks, going, "Hey, hey, watch it with the laser breath." Uh, In fairness, was, that's what I'd be doing too. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you haven't been perched on a rock waiting to be called on to save the world for eons either. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> uh, anyway, trying to, trying to check out the kinks. He's like, I can't go fight you. It, it's a it's a fun movie, and I'll I'll watch it again. I, and I love how serious all the actors are in these. Um, mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. Chad, I have to ask, did you fast forward for the song? Mm, yes, I did, Jeff. You know me very well. <laughs> I absolutely fast forwarded through the song. Yeah. Same That's thing no I did during song. Mothra. It's the Mothra song is way better than this one, but hundred times better. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I fast forwarded. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I I love kaiju films. I love monster movies. Uh, you know, King Kong, Godzilla, uh, all the ones from the fifties. You know, all the monster movies from there as well. So it, I, so this one, uh, all the Godzilla films I had an affection for in one way or another. This one is one of the ones that stand out to me because of that famous monster cover, which then, you know, is on the poster that we use. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was used for the poster first and then famous monsters mm -hmm. or, or what the order was. Cause I, I think I only realized that it was on the famous monster cover, but uh, you know, cause it got that. And then I remember the King Kong one and then there's the ape, you know, the jaws and ape one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which is fantastic. And, Oh man. Uh, I just love these covers and but this film what uh, okay i i forgot more than i remembered about this film uh, i did remember that there was you know the four monsters and you you know it's got it's got it's got a plate full of monsters right because you got you got uh king caesar you got mecha godzilla you got godzilla and you got and what is it and Angurus? and gears yeah. yeah um which is not one of my favorite ones uh, but a lot of people do yeah. like him though I've never understood. I've never understood people like him. He's so obviously a guy walking on his hands and knees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, he does a good job getting getting swung by his tail. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I say I'm out of focus, aren't I? There we go. I can't do it. Um, anyway, so I it's not one of my favorites, uh, but you know, I I love the like uh, uh, was it Godzilla and King Kong. Uh, Godzilla mm -hmm. and Mothra. I love uh, mm -hmm. uh, what it, all monsters attack. Is that what it is? The destroy all monsters. Destroy all monsters. Yes, yeah. all monsters. Attack. Yeah, uh, that's later, right? Oh. Yeah, that's uh, way later. Yeah. Yeah, I love all those. And and then I used to have like the eight millimeter ones of some. Oh of wow! Oh, yeah. they were fun. Uh, cool. Oh my god! Yes. Uh, Cut out the middle section, which is all to the good. Yeah. Oh, you never had any of the people. It was just the monster would come out of a mountain and destroy some things and you were out, you were done. That was the movie. Yeah. I don't yeah. Even know, uh, anyway. So I, <laughs> I, I, I know I saw this film when I was a kid, but I couldn't tell anything about it because it was just one of those films that I ended up going to see as a kid. I remember more from 
the famous monsters that I do from actually seeing the movie, but I know I saw it. I know, but what's, um, what's funny is I didn't realize at the time, all the influences, right. You know, having the ape men that look very much like the plan of the apes, right. And which was yeah. huge then. And of course, you know, robots were getting bigger and bigger. Um, I, there was a lot of anime that was starting to come around. We were getting, uh, it was this before or around the same time we start getting some of those space, anime shows in the states right mm. um what I, I forget the names of them all somebody's Star Blazers. Out there. yeah Star Bla somebody's yeah. out there telling tell me everything uh hollering at the names <laughs> right uh, maybe jerry <laughs> maybe it's jerry i uh anyway so I, I watched it again and it's it's a goofy mess kind of kind of great in that way but you can see the decline right when you compare it to i mean yeah, I mean, even Godzilla vs. Kong, which to me is my favorite one, uh, they they do have that same kind of wrestling mm -hmm. approach to it. I mean, less so than here. I mean, here that's it's almost like they they actually do the the moves that you would think of. Mm -hmm. or at least I remember in the seventies and eighties that you, know, you would get right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but man, you you ate it up as a kid. That yeah. it was great as a kid. Right. But seeing it back now as an adult, you can see why. You know, um, this particular era from the 70s is looked at with a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, a, a furrowed brow, right? People go, mm, yeah, those guys, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I'm actually really glad <laughs> Chad picked this one. Uh, it was fun uh, revisiting. But I don't know why, but I've always loved King Caesar. I just love the look of it. I just, I just like the idea of him. And maybe yeah. it is because he's really one of the few mammals. Yeah, everything else is either a lizard or some kind of aquatic creature. The cool idea of the god kind of creature, you know, the mm -hmm. have, I guess these stone lions are very popular in Japan. Yeah, is it, yeah, he's almost supposed to be a cross between a lion and something. Or is it just a, a dog? Lion? Yeah, but he, yeah. to me, I always got a dragon feel from him too. Mm. Uh, but uh, in a way, in a way, right? Yeah. When he's yeah. in the in the statue, he looks kind of like a dragon, but when yeah. the thing running around. Not so much, <laughs> but, uh, but the way the way they ended up, they made him a big chicken. He was hiding behind rocks, and he was got Mecha Godzilla was kicking his butt, and he was kind of like, "Hey, who woke me? I woke up for this, you know." And that kind of, yeah. you know. Um, sure I think he's a cool character, though. He's really, really. It's a cool design for the character. Now I think that's a German poster, right? Probably. Well, yeah. Although, although yeah, I'm surprised yeah. they didn't call it Frankenstein because a lot of the Godzilla movies, for some reason. In Germany, were called Frankenstein movies. I guess that's well. That, they were also called King Kong. This yeah, one, they're also oh, okay. everything. Everything was King Kong, and they don't really know why, but it was King Kong Monster from the Deep, der, what <laughs> Monster aus der Teufel or something Teufel. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't know why Germany is the one place they're always different. They're almost always they're, different. Yeah, those Germans. Yeah, but those are cool. Well, I think King Kong Escapes was. They were really. Big on King Kong escapes in Germany, I think I've read, mm -hmm. and so everything that looked Mecca, like the Mecca Kong, kind of right. translated over to the Mecca Godzilla, right. and so everything kind of became King Kong. So, I, I mean, I love the design of, of of Mecha Godzilla. In fact, if I ever decide to devote months of my life to doing a cosplay, you're going to do a Mecha, Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla is the one. I, I mean, I'd rather have a Godzilla suit. But I've seen people do Godzilla suits who have way more talent than I do, and they end up looking pretty rubbish. So yeah. the thing about Mecha Godzilla is it's it's more doable in that you yeah. know, the stuff the, you can make. The I, I thought I work. thought sure, Bill, you were going to say uh, you know build a Mecha Godzilla in your backyard. You'd be well, one of those too. guys. <laughs> You'd be one yeah. of those guys that people come and travel to see the. I'll the, take it to the guy who like guy built the Millennium <laughs> Falcon in his backyard yes, with yes. the yeah. crossover. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Well, this is this is a great. This is a fan poster, right? Is this a real poster or a fan poster? Because that I don't I don't great. recall ever seeing this poster. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a great, it's great, a great poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. It's got all the all the people in it, all the yeah. monsters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mega Godzilla has always been such a, an awesome design. Um, and in the and newer, well, movies, well executed. Yeah, the newer movies, they they went balls to the walls on yeah. redesigning him and making him yeah. truly terrifying. And Ready Player One was I the only one that was standing up? Oh, I uh, yeah. myself a little bit when he fought the Iron Giant. Yeah. 
Yeah. There you see Godzilla just... defying the laws of physics, picking angles yeah. up by his tail. <laughs> yeah. And he's not too happy about it either. Look at that face. I like oh. the way he would pick him up and then take the tail and push the tail down as he was slamming yes. him down. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff. Just like a, WWE couldn't do any better. Than That's that. right. Godzilla himself seems pretty slim in this movie. Yeah, this is and, a and the the Godzillas in these last few movies. I'm not a big fan. He's not as bulky, like no. you said, Bill. Um, and the face is almost a cartoonish. He's got a puppy dog. Type of well, face. he's a hero, yeah. so he's got the big eyes. Yeah, so they kind of had. Yeah, they went away from his usual. He's a, it's a far cry from the first. The big eyes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so by the time this got to the States in 77, we were collecting Godzilla comics from Marvel. Do you remember that? Oh, Hell yeah. yes, I remember. Uh, Herb, yes. Trim Herb, Herb, Herb Trimpey. Trimpey and, I, I love yeah. those comics. He didn't look anything like Godzilla. No. Um, but he was cool. He just looked like a big uh, lizard, green lizard. Yeah. But he fought everybody from the Fantastic Four to the Avengers and Nick Fury. And you couldn't, wow. you couldn't ask for Oh, better that was, than that at that, the time. Yeah. That's great, man. That's great. Marvel discovered, like everybody who's ever cut a deal with Toho, that you, you think you're lived, getting, you think, yeah, you think you're getting Godzilla and everyone, and they're like, oh no, just Godzilla. Yeah, we'll need yeah. another deal for Ghidorah, and they're like, no, we'll just come up with our own cool monsters. Name didn't even one. fight one of the Shogun warriors, or he fought he the did. Shogun There's warriors. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which makes sense because the guy there was a Godzilla Shogun warrior with the flying yeah, fist. And yeah, if you, if you have mm -hmm. one of those things. You can yeah. sell it for a tremendous amount of money, especially if you haven't lost the fist, which everybody did. So the little flame tongue that would come out. Yeah, I don't. I don't have it. I wish I picked it up. I could have. What flame tongue. So, you guys help me out here. What is uh, what does Showa era? How what, how is that differentiated from other? Is it just a time frame, or is there? It's a time frame, but also it's yeah. like a reboot. It's like this is the from Godzilla to Terror of Mecha Godzilla. And then yeah, the, the next Godzilla reboot 84, was 84. There's a big yeah. long gap, and it's like okay. this is it's almost like they're saying every every time they reboot it, they're like the first Godzilla really happened, and all the other movies after that didn't happen. This is the sequel to the original Godzilla. Right. And they go, I think ah. they even brought, brought Raymond Burr back to the uh, they did. Oh my god, yeah. they did. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, but, well, the American version yeah. anyway. Yeah. And and then they had a, a third one, which was uh, in the in the two thousands, right? Yeah, right. Which uh, were just a very serious minded movies very and serious. very good special effects, very um, good creature designs, and yeah. um, and then you have uh, Iolante. Give me a break. And we got Shin yeah. Godzilla. Oh, yeah, but Shin yeah. Godzilla is kind of its own thing, right? And we're going to get Shin it is. Godzilla. And then the TV shows, the anime, <laughs> the anime thing yeah. is its own thing. I mean, you're yeah. a fool if you try to hold the Japanese to any kind of continuity. Mm -hmm. because they don't care. You could be watching an anime show, season one, I love it, and season two, okay, this one takes place in the future with the same characters. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, and they just, okay, you just got to go with it. I love that. Yeah. I mean, anything, it's for the sake of the story, mm -hmm. they make it, the story fit everything else, not the continuity right. fit, fit the, which I love, I love that. It, you know, the story comes first. And if it's, it's you tell a good story and it needs to take place in the future, hey, who, who's to argue? Who's to who's to? Yeah. Well, a lot of toxic fans, but sure. <laughs> but yeah. other than that, but other than that, you know, it's it's they love to tell if it fits the story. That's what they go with. Yeah, and another, I, I love that. Yeah, I think another reason we probably all loved Godzilla around this time is the Godzilla cartoon with Godzilla with Godzuki. Godzuki, yeah, yeah. I, I was there every Saturday. Yep. Did you ever get one of those posters out of Famous Monsters? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Because they would they would sell like like a huge like big long wall posters for you put behind mm -hmm. your door. Yeah. And you could get this and King Kong. The life size monster posters that they yeah. would sell. Like, the Frank any poster monster. they sent you, you had to take. It's like life size monster. It's only four feet tall. It's like, hey kid, you ever seen a real monster? No. Then shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's assuming they ever actually sent it to you. The famous monsters Captain Company was infamous for advertising stuff they had not. They never had in stock. So mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Good luck. I think that I think that Frankenstein was a Jack Davis. I think oh, it was. It was, it was uh, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yes. I, I, furry, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember getting the creature from the Black Lagoon, and my friend got uh, the King Kong. Yeah. Had, had the King Kong with the chains. And, or yeah. no, that, was, that was Creature, right? Creature had a Cre Creature had chains. Yeah. 
Yeah. I would have gotten Vampirilla, but I guess I was a little older than you. So. Yeah, you were. I wasn't into mm. Vampirilla yet. It, it, oh, that well. time came later. That's that sure. time does come. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the director real quick. June. Uh, I, somebody pronounced that last name for me. Fukuda. 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 Uh, <laughs> what is it? This isn't one of the directors I know. Um, uh, he did. But, he did a number of them. He did a number of Godzilla movies. They're all. They're none yeah. of them are my favorites. Although I do love Son of Godzilla, even though it's a pretty stupid movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a clip show. He did the Mega yeah. Man, the Giga, the, the versus Gigan. Yeah, those are the those were gets to a clip show. I think actually, Son of Godzilla has mostly or all original footage. Has the ugliest Godzilla costume, mm. but uh, but it's mostly original, and it's it's a sweet story. And Son of Godzilla is cute without being too horrifyingly awful, mm. like he was in some. Nobody talks, mm. uh, but, but you know he's not he's not. Honda, right? Who, you know, yeah. did the great ones and came oh, back one God. more time to do Boy. Terror Mecha Godzilla, which is another reason why I love Mecha. Oh, Terror. well, there you go, there you go. Yeah. That's a good reason. Like, he also did uh, the Abira Horror of the Deep. Oh yeah, the Sea Monster. Is, yeah, that's one I like. That's one of my <laughs> favorites. Yeah, that's a, well, that's a, a weird cool one because it was supposed to be a King Kong movie, and at the last moment, they lost the rights or decided to go with Godzilla instead. So he's acting completely out of character for Godzilla, but he's acting totally in character for King Kong. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's an oddball little Godzilla movie. But yeah, I like that one just fine. Um, you know, he had shrinking budgets. He did not have the composer. I think one of the biggest weaknesses of his films is the music. Uh, Godzilla films are so, um, you know, identified with and I'm not pronouncing his name right, Ifukube. Um, Ifukube, yeah. Yeah. His his music is just wonderful. And this one, you know, sometimes the music's a little jazzier than yeah. I'd prefer a little you know uh, and that, and that's, that was is. that was sort of par for the course on these Godzilla movies in this era. Mm -hmm. uh, a little the music was a little more seventies 70 ish. That's the only way I can describe it, you know? Yeah. Uh, upbeat, like Jim Bill said, jazzier. And you didn't have that um, menacing um, Godzilla march and, right. and, the, and that kind of thing. Yeah. They didn't want to scare the kiddies, I guess. But I guess. Although they certainly showed enough blood here. Yeah. They did. He got, he, he, they splattered him a little bit here. When he gets shot with the little finger yeah. rockets and stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, they would. He's squirting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know that that maybe that's also part. You know, Ultraman was astonishingly bloody for its time. It was, yeah, yeah. It's late sixties, right? You know, they, they sliced monsters in half, and they were just like <laughs> fall apart. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. rip Godzilla's fake gills off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when Godzilla made yeah. a yeah. 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 He's got a frill on. Ultraman rips off the frill and then pretends to be like like a bullfighter. Oh my god, he does. <laughs> total dick move, yeah, I might add. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. man. Well, this so I love when uh, Mecha Godzilla shoots him with his finger rockets, and they're all embedded over his body. Yeah, and I'm right. I'm thinking he's going to take him out and throw him back, but no, instead he goes <laughs> just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blows them all out. He becomes magnetic because there's a yeah. power he has literally never shown before or since. But yes, yes. They just invented for this movie. Well, he sat in a mountain and sucked it all up, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> uh, Fukuda also did, uh, Fukuda, or however you say, I'm so bad at names, did War in Space in 1977. I feel like I saw that film too. Yeah, I've seen that, but I, it was, it's been a long time ago. Yeah. Cause I would, I, my mom would take me to see these weird movies. Like there's, um, cause I also love disaster films and mm -hmm. I, there was all these foreign disaster films, uh, you know, like tidal wave and yeah. there was an earthquake one and they were awful. <laughs> <laughs> they were awful, awful. But I remember seeing this war in space. I don't know why. I, I can always get this one. That one mix, mixed up with message. From space, from space, space too, but this is the one that has like the ship looking thing. Oh, right. but it I, anyway, it, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but there is a character that we should talk about. He, I guess he's playing the bad guy here. 
and um, we've hey, talked we know about that guy. Him. We've talked about him recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he's not really a bad guy. No, he's the Interpol agent. He just looks like oh, a that's bad right. guy. That's right. That's right. They think he's a bad guy for a while, but yeah, uh, yeah. He was he was the Dracula in in two mm-hmm. of the Toho Draculas, and and I didn't realize this. This is why I had to send this to you literally at the last minute. Um, because I'm like I'm looking over his credits, I hadn't made this graphic. It's like, oh my god, he was one of the masters of death in Shogun Assassin, one of my top ten movies of all time. He was. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think he was the one who gets his head literally split open. Um, wow. At, yeah, so that's pretty cool. He has a unique look, very, you know, angular features, um, an intense look that that worked well for the vampires and. Worked well in this. I was convinced he was a bad guy. I was like, we're watching this with my wife, and she's like, well, he's obviously a bad guy because he's in a Japanese movie. He's got a, a beard and a mustache. Like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. And, so, yeah. and then he shows up. It's like, oh, this guy's even worse. Look at those dark glasses. He might as well have a black hat and a T-shirt <laughs> that says evil on it. But Ooh. no, no, they subverted our expectations. So. Oh, man. I, you know, what the... One of the things you won't expect in this movie, and we're going to go back to it, are are the the ape aliens. Oh. Now, th- this one's funny, but the one earlier on where it's half ape and half human, mm-hmm. I thought actually looked pretty good. Yeah, the yeah that's cool. creepy. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's obviously fake, but for the time, and I so I don't remember the full ape, but I do remember the half ape from seeing the movie. The half, <laughs> half ape must have disturbed me more. And then when they when they get never go human, full ape. That's never go full. When they get their human disguise blown off for some reason, I can't explain. They they can only speak in grunts. They yeah, the ability yeah. to yeah. speak. And I've never really understood. This is a science fiction trope I've never really gotten. But aliens who disguise themselves as humans, fine. But then when they're by themselves in their lair, when there's no one else around except they're still pretending to be humans. Yeah. It's like if I if I went to a planet of apes and I had to like walk among them, sure, I'd wear a gorilla mask. But as soon as I got home, I mean, I don't like wearing the masks I got to wear now, much less a whole gorilla mask. I'd pull that thing off and try to get some air in there. But no, these guys these guys prefer the the great minty smell of humans. So yes, <laughs> yes, we all do, don't we? Uh, all right, so Ooh. the staple yeah. of Godzilla films, yeah, <laughs> and Colonel Sanders. Uh, commercial. What? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! Now I can't unsee that. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> so he was in the first Godzilla movie as the as the scientist who you know comes up with the solution to get rid of Godzilla, and he was in the last of this original series two in in the next one he's in this one Mm -hmm. and the next one playing a different character yeah Um, oh he's a different character oh yeah yeah okay he's the crazy guy who believes in titanosaurus and nobody else does and to prove them wrong he um six titanosaurus on the city which Mm. is a bit of an overreaction but i guess they laughed at him so that's what happens Mm. he's in war in space as well just saying yeah i'm just going to go back to that yeah so he's he went from being professor Miyajima to Dr. Mufuni. Okay. It's fun. It's fun to see some of these callbacks to earlier movies, some of these actors. And he was an Ultraman too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he he played, I think he played a professor there too, or a doctor. Mm-hmm. Um he has that authority. He has that gravitas that lets him do those mm-hmm. those sort of things. Probably got hopelessly typecast. Um oh my god, he's a different character. I always thought he was the same guy. He's, she she Shigazawa. He, he's that a lot, right? Because that's mm-hmm. the that's the auctionator, right? The auction agent? right? Yeah, that's auction destroyer. destroyer. Yeah, yeah, auction destroyer. Well, there you go. I, I like him though. He's got a cool look about him, it's, especially with that eye patch. And yeah, yep. hey, where was that one from? What's that one from? That's the, oh, that's that's the first Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. The first Godzilla. Yeah. That's the first Godzilla. Hey, yeah. you know what? I'm looking. I'm looking here at the bottom picture. I think I could cosplay this guy. You probably could. You I might get in trouble. Yeah. KFC um, might yeah. get the <laughs> right, Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, everybody would say, hey, look, Colonel Sanders. Mm. It's bad Bill's, enough. Bill's uh, Colonel Sanders. George Lucas. 
I mean, Godzilla so versus what, robot. So, so what do we bring out other than you know the great? Yeah. Well, I mean, when do, well, you, do you think of Godzilla films? Do you think of anything other than the big wrestling matches? I mean, because basically you got no, not wrestling. in this, not in this era. I mean, it was all about the fights. It was all oh, about yeah. the Godzilla fights. That huge and, section in the middle of this film between the last fight, the, the first fight and the last fight kind of drags on. Yeah. Well, that's where you get all of the monkey action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get all the monkey, oh, monkey oh, yeah. action. But you do get a, you yeah, know, a, one little battle between Godzilla and them. I will say one of my favorite Godzilla moments is is when he Mecha Godzilla is flying toward him, I think, and he shoots a breath at him or does something to him, and it doesn't work. And Godzilla's like, yeah. almost had you know, he's like puts his hand like, like oh golly gee, I almost had nice. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all zapping out their eyes, and yeah. yeah. But there's oh, yeah. one there's one one scene where Godzilla Mecha Godzilla is in the middle of. King Caesar and Godzilla, and they're just blasting him, and he's just standing there, just and the head turns, and mm -hmm. it was just great. It was great. I feel like a little five year old right now, just talking about it. It was great stuff. Great stuff. No, and, and the introduction of Mecha Godzilla, where they just show just yeah. quick cuts to his mm -hmm. face, his claws, mm -hmm. and like all the parts. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted as a kid. Yeah, there's some of the other films from. There's your jet jaguar down there. There's and what the hell are these two things called to his left? Uh, there's Gigan and Megalon. And Megalon, yeah. Oh, okay. Gigan, Gigan, I don't know. I don't know Gigan. why I can't remember this, but there's, there's two a... two characters who could be completely flummoxed by a doorknob. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Gigan had the buzz saw in his chest. He had the buzz saw in his happened. chest, but he's got oh, those sorry. weird little curvy hands. Yeah. And Megalon's just got like pyramid hands. They would crash together, and it's like you don't have opposable thumbs. I'm not scared of you. But they did a great. They did a great job of reimagining <laughs> these creatures later on in the or in the uh, more modern uh, movies. They did a pretty good job of reimagining them. Well, also if you play some of the new video games, and Godzilla is infamous for having some of the crappiest video games ever, and then. All of a sudden, I think it was the Dreamcast came up with the Godzilla game that we always dreamed of, where you got to play giant, cool-looking monsters. Oh, my, my son and I still play this game. It's a great game, and and it's uh, an awesome game. And it made me and not only did you get the you get to play the different Godzillas and different monsters from different eras of the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, Santos and I used to play this game. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, yeah, just awesome, awesome game. And Gigan looked pretty cool in that. Yeah. You know? So yeah. if they want to revisit him and come up with a new, you know, by the time they made him the movies, they didn't have the resources to make him look anything other than like a third rate mm -hmm. Ultraman villain. But yeah, things are different now. I'm very yeah, much looking forward to the next Godzilla movie. All right. Well, you know, I don't know where to go with this because it's, there's We're done. Probably, I yeah. know, we, might, we might be We're done. done. Um, all right, so let's, let's go ahead and wrap it up and, and kind of talk about Godzilla and this film and where it sits in your memory and your and uh, pick out a scene that you love. You want to pick out a scene you love. Chad, you first, sir. Um, That's not Chad. Is, oh, there you go. <laughs> here I am. Uh, this is always going to be and this is it for any Godzilla, even the worst Godzilla movie, I'll sit and watch it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I just am so in love with this, this series of movies and the character. And, and this is one of the highlights for me. Uh, I remember, like I always say, when we watch these, if it still makes me feel like I'm 10 years old and I'm watching it and it still has, makes me feel the way I did, did when I first watched it, then, then, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, and I still feel that way about this one. I remember exactly where I saw the trailer. I remember the exact day I went to see it. Um, the popcorn that I had while I was watching it, it just brings all that back. And you can't, you can't beat that with a stick. You know, you, that's just the best feeling ever. Um, and I'll always love this movie. Always love it. And um, one of my 
I don't know if I have if I can pick out a favorite scene, but the scene that is most memorable to me um, when I first saw this was uh, why is Godzilla sound different? Why is he mm-hmm. why is he uh, kill, trying to kill Anguirus and, and and that kind of thing? And it really was a mystery for me <laughs> back then. And that's you know, and then you saw the scale come off and the metal underneath and and that kind of thing. And you and this, he sounded different. And that kind of thing, you finally figured out this isn't real Godzilla. Um, it was that moment when you realized that he was a robot and he wasn't the real Godzilla that always really, really stuck with me. And um, so I don't know if that can be considered a favorite a scene, but but um, it's one of the most memorable parts of, of the movie for me. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Bill Mulligan, sir. You're oh, I mean. Hey, come on, listen, if you have to be talked into watching this movie, it's not for you. I mean, you know what Godzilla movies, especially 60s, 70s Godzilla movies, what they're like. They, they've gotten pretty silly and childlike. I mean, a couple of movies before this one, Godzilla and Angulus are actually talking. Look it up. Look it up on YouTube. You know, Godzilla speaking yeah. and it's yeah. you want to shoot yourself. <laughs> um, they'd really, they'd really gotten silly. And these were movies for kids. If you look at they, this went out with like an anime movie, these, they, at this point they were designed for kids. This feels like an attempt to pull things back, try to maybe recapture a little of the darkness, a little the more serious tone. And they, they did this and they made one more movie and then called it quits for a while. Cause it just wasn't, wasn't working out. I think, I think it's just one of those things that Godzilla in America is thought of differently than Godzilla in Japan. It, for some reason, we we may have taken to it more than they did in a way, um, as far as being like a true icon. But it's a fun it's a fun film and and definitely worth seeking out. And favorite scene, I think I just like there's there's a shot. I think the the, scene, the the shot where Godzilla realizes that there's something fishy about this other Godzilla, and he just has this like hmm? you know yeah. like like a dog. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. It's like when you fool your dog with a trick or something, he's just what the, what what is this? <laughs> and it's cute. I mean, you know, this like I said, this is not my favorite Godzilla design. This is the puppy dog hero Godzilla friend of children sort of thing. And I like I like him a little more not necessarily villainous, but you know badass. force of, force of, yeah, badass force of nature that he's not stepping on us because he means to. He just doesn't care. I'm not even mm-hmm. sure he's aware we're there. I don't, I don't weep for every ant I accidentally step on. Then I don't go out of my way to stomp on their anthills. I'm not a sociopath. But, you know, I'm sure I've stepped on a lot of ants in my life, and uh, that's what happens when you're big. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shirt. That's why I like to my kids. Yes. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Sir Jeff. Uh, you know, I never saw any of these. None um growing up well i take that well i'm not gonna tell that story because ah! hmm. well i had i had some neighbor kids in the 60s that liked them and talked me into going to one of them with them and i didn't like it and this was pre i don't know i was probably seven or eight maybe eight probably eight or eh, eight or nine we moved away from that place when i turned 10 so probably eight or nine do you know which uh, one it was I don't. I, I don't remember back that far. All I remember thinking is it was dumb. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I got, a few, I got a few candidates that it could have been. Yeah. Um, but I love, I absolutely love, I think the first Godzilla films, one of the best movies ever made. And I, what I don't like is when it's obvious that it's a suit actor, you know, it's, and, that first one is not like that. I'd much rather watch stop motion animation or sure. other other types of special effects. But having said all that, I did buy the uh, uh, the Criterion Jambalaya thing that's got the, all the show air thing. Oh you know, yeah, which mm-hmm. I watched this one yesterday. I haven't watched hardly anything out of it yet, uh, but I watched this one yesterday, and I was really impressed with the quality of the picture. It is really sharp and clear and i wouldn't have expected that i guess from a from 74 maybe um but hey it's a, they did a really good job so i ended up being like engrossed in the explosions and the <laughs> and i did like mecha godzilla mecha godzilla 
was kind of cool in a in a sort of Ultraman kind of way. You didn't know what more what other gadget was going to come out or what other yeah. Uh, and then trying to figure out the the whole alien situation, who were alien agents and who were Interpol agents. And Interpol agents are very odd. They just stand in the background and laugh at you until they need to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. then, uh, but uh, it, it was it, it was. Uh, Fun. And then the old statue switcher. There was a lot of cool stuff in there. So my favorite scene, I'm I'm gonna say. So you said if you have to be talked into watching this, I probably you know, if it wasn't the fact that doing these shows, I don't know if I'd ever get into them, but I'm definitely yeah. gonna go through those series just in terms of education and try to see what you guys see. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I'm not done yet. Yeah, watch um, them in order. It helps because yeah, if you accidentally yeah. like watch the wrong one first, you'll never watch another one. Mm. <laughs> so that, that may have been what happened <laughs> and i think the first when i first saw the uh godzilla i saw the raymond burr one which changes yeah it. yeah yeah oh yeah the original totally ones. different movie yeah yeah um so, so anyway uh, enough of that yapping but I, my favorite scene I'm, I'm gonna go with the one i already talked about i loved when the finger rockets went into stuck yeah. in godzilla and he's, he's like a porcupine with rockets sticking out mm. <laughs> He just yeah, sort of yeah. like uh, I don't know. Was that reverse magnetism? Is that how he got rid of him? I don't know. He's turned himself into a magnet. Yeah. It was sort of like a sort of like a guy that had to fart Lions. train. Yeah. You know, <laughs> them all out. Yeah, anyway. Could have. Yeah. Today you grow beard. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. So I remember. I mean, I I, I talked about this earlier, but in the seventies, everything was Godzilla as a kid, right? Because mm -hmm. they would have movie of the week at four thirty. We used to have movies during the yeah. afternoon. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. And they would have movie, and yeah. they would have Godzilla movies, and sure. because they would be over by six, and when the news came on, and um, man, I just watched all those. All, I mean, they would play all the crazy ones too, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure some of these bad ones would show up later on. But uh, I think this one is after, actually after that. But uh, definitely, you know, would build my affection. You know, Godzuki, the, the Godzilla card, you know, up from the depths, twelve story stuff. Um, yeah. And then the and then the comic, and 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 also would get. You know, I don't know if you guys remember the model. The Aurora oh, model? Yeah. I still right? have that oh, one. Yeah. Oh, do you? Oh, my oh, yes, God. Sir. I, have, I used I to have it. Clothes in the dark. That would have Yes. Been. I don't have any of those, but I had them all. Oh, I had... Yeah. I I even had like the the pirate ones. You know, the ones that, that actually animated, they, they could make a move. Oh, my Those God. Guys. Yes. Those were I, the best. I had a shelf just full of them. Yeah. I loved doing the models. Um yeah, it's it's sad. I think I blew them all up with firecrackers later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kids are awful. With grasshoppers. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> no, I don't think I put wow. grasshoppers in them, but but I did I did do uh, I did put bottle rockets into the cars that the wheels actually move. So that was kind of cool. They would zoom up my driveway and then blow up. That was awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was when you could just go down the street and buy bottle rockets. Right. Right. Um. Anyway. I digress. Uh, mm. um, but I, yeah, th this brought back a lot of memories. It's good for that. Um, I, uh, I'll, I will watch any kaiju film. Uh, not, I mean, any of them. Gamera, all the, all the, even the South Korean ones. Have you ever watched any of those? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wolf, yeah, yeah. But they're still so much fun. Um, uh, even the even the British ones. Have you ever watched any of the British ones? Like they're, yeah, they're yeah. Gorgo, 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 and, uh, and, and yeah. Congo was fun. Congo, yeah, yeah. they yeah. they are hilariously bad. Yeah, uh, Michael Gow. Yes, he was seen yeah. to be on all of them, didn't he? Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I mean, I I just love them. I love them, and even like the like the, the, the yeah, Goff. Goff. yeah. And I even, knew Jeff would chime in with that. Yeah, even <laughs> even, even, even the ones that are you know offshoots like the mushroom people attacking the mushroom people yeah you know which yeah. is not really a kaiju film but no hardly I'll, ever got I'll, shown, I'll, so. I'll lump it in there anyway um slime people slime people don't get me giant started. behemoth you're gonna giant behemoth i'll oh, stop yeah. uh you get into the states and you get them and all this stuff but uh you know king kong of course and yeah. all the dinosaur movies you get it just goes bonkers from there i love the monster movies um, oh yeah 
and and I probably they're my favorite out of everything. Uh, you know, if if I can include like Universal monsters in it, but the monsters I love more than you know like the slashers and stuff. You know, I'm not of the slasher age. Um, although yeah. I I do love slasher films and and horror films mm-hmm. from the '80s, but for me, I'm a monster kid. I guess really, I just grew up right there at the end of the monster kid era. Um, right as Fangoria was, our famous monsters was transitioning into Fangoria, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Fangoria number one. What's on the cover? Uh, Godzilla. Godzilla. So I you know, I you know, I caught that one and picked it up, and it wasn't because of you know Dawn of the Dead being in it. It was because Godzilla was on the cover. Godzilla, right? yeah. Exactly. <laughs> these, are movie, yeah. these are movies I could watch like with my sisters too, because they might be scared of the monster, mon- the human sized monsters. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. the giant monsters are not scary. They're awesome. They're awe-inspiring. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't want to get stepped on, but they didn't. They didn't bring the the scary thought that the the smaller, ironically, the smaller ones are scarier, right? They're yeah. the forces of nature. Right. Yeah. So, a uh, favorite so scene, fun. you know, would be you guys pick the favorite scene, the you know, the finger things. Uh, but it's going to be any time they do the wrestling thing, with, especially when all of them are there. <laughs> King Caesar's yeah. out there too. He's gotten out from behind the rock, and they're all <laughs> blasting eyeball stuff and breath rays. Yeah. And I don't know what the hell Agurus is doing, but he's trying. Uh, or is he already gone by then? Yeah, he. I think he was. Shot. He was gone. Yeah, he, he got. He got and swung and thrown drawing. away. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh my Back god. Scene or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was the other films that they really did the like the team matches, right? With the Gigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but this one kind of almost did that. It was the two against one, though. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I, <laughs> it's just, it's a damn silly film. Damn silly film. Uh, but there you go. There's there's our review for uh, <laughs> Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. I th- do you guys like the newer ones better? I mean, is the Mechagodzilla got better as he went along, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's t- it's, it's like. Charm. It's like asking which one of your kids you like you love better. I love well, that, that might They're be different. True. They're different. You, just, you love yeah. everything. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, yeah. They're all. They all have their their strength. I mean, the new ones have much better special effects. I mean, it's yeah, genuinely yeah. cool effects and everything. But you know, there's a there's a certain charm in some of those earlier ones that you can't recapture because it was a different time and right. people wouldn't want to see that now. Um, finding the right balance is, is interesting. And the Godzilla series has gone on for so long. I mean, yeah, over half a century 30, now. 37 of them or so? Yeah. yeah. They, the, the movies have been made during a time when the cultures of America and Japan were totally different from what they are now. And the movies are very much a reflection of the time mm-hmm. that they were made in. So it's, it is hard to compare them. Or it, kind of like the James Bond series. They obviously wouldn't make a James Bond movie now like they did back in the early 60s. Mm-hmm. That's, But you, those movies can still be your favorite. Goldfinger is still probably my favorite James Bond movie, although mm-hmm. I can certainly say the newer ones are better in almost every aspect of film that you can have, but I may still have as my favorite some of the earlier Sean Connery ones. And so there's certain characters that you can – do different things with. I mean, like Batman. Batman can be a horror title. It can be a detective yeah. title. It can be an action title. You can co- sort of put that character into any situation and it would work as long as somebody's telling the story the right way. And, and Godzilla's right. been that same kind of character as an as a, um, an uh, allegory for the atomic bomb, uh, wrestling, uh, superheroes, um, and then back around to a hero, the hero of the world and a force of nature. He's been all those things in, in movies. And that's a testament really to how, what a good character that is, that mm-hmm. you can literally drop it in any kind of situation and make it yeah. work. Now he, now he reflects more like global warming in a way, you know, that, the, yeah, sure, yeah. that we are destroying the planet mm-hmm. and he's back to, you know, set things right. 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 It's always been a reflection of whatever, you know, our fears or Japan's fears were, you know, alien invasion, pollution, technology. Yeah, monster, it, yeah. yeah, you know, so it's been you you can write some pretty good movie radiation. Your, yeah. yeah, yes, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Definitely radiation. Yeah. So if you take a film class and you gotta write one of those god awful essays, pick a Godzilla movie, 
and uh, go to town. Yeah. <laughs> it probably get a C. Lend, lends itself very nicely to it that. It does, yeah. Uh, all right. So before we get to uh, a couple of feedback, we have a few minutes. Maybe if we squeeze one in, uh, we know what we're doing on our next episode. Jeff, do we know? We do. You picked it. I picked it. You want me to say? Uh, uh, Damon Omen 2. Damien, Damien Omen 2. Damien the Omen 2. Yes. One of the trashiest, but kind of fun movies to watch. <laughs> this is why, this is, yeah, we're going to, between this and uh, <laughs> Exorcist 2, uh, sequels start getting a bad oh boy. Name pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but, oh my God, I love that. So we're going to, we're going to. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Yes, I was all oh, this movie. It, it has everybody in it I like, and it has the elevator scene. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. We're going to do it. Oh, how did you forget about the elevator scene? That was scary. Mm. All right. Let's uh, let's do some feedback, Jeff. You got it. You got a minute or two. Let's go for it. Okay. So uh, this one is on episode 128, Sisters the Brian De Palma film mm -hmm. from Andy Morton from UK. He says, watch this about a month ago. Spooky. And then he says, is Doc okay? He sounds slightly more crazed every show late. Maybe a good way. <laughs> no, Andy, he is not no. okay. No, everything's fine, Andy. We were afraid to Help say us. anything. Help us. Oh, that was that was six episodes ago. If you could remember that, there was one episode where Doc was kind of like, hmm. Mm. Uh, and then also from Andy, he, we got a double header from him for uh, episode 130, The Crazies. He writes, <laughs> really enjoyed the discourse about the parallels between this film and now. So mm -hmm. I was worried maybe we talked a little bit too much about politics, but apparently not for Andy. It's a Romero movie. It's going to come up. Yeah. And uh, Donnie Salvo says, I've only seen the remake. I'm looking forward to hearing this one. So I would love to hear back from Donnie yeah. on whether or not he yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, was was uh, motivated to go back and, and watch the original. It's always I cool like the, when, when people haven't seen something and oh, we yeah. kind of bring it to their attention. That's That's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We even do it in between us. Yeah, oh, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we do. Look, we, and we, I, we made Jeff watch this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't, and I'm not, you know, I'm not <laughs> mad about it. No. Um, this here's one more quick one. Episode 127, Space Amoeba from Jerry Chandler. Oh. He says, Hello, I love this Jerry. film. I love this film to Bill Mulligan re Ultraman F you. Yeah, oh, you know. <laughs> and I don't remember what you said about oh. Ultraman, but I, I probably on. said that the, the the monsters had a kind of a cheesy Ultraman. Quality. If if Jerry wants to die on the hill, that Ultraman's monsters are like the the epitome of of a realistic uh, monster stuff. <laughs> the I kind when they split say. open fruit salad falls out. I'm just happy he didn't say, you know what would have made Yogg even better? Jet Jaguar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should have come out of the volcano and kicked that amoeba's ass. That actually might have worked. Yeah, yeah, actually, I don't, I don't really uh, we got We got a comment of his we're going to read uh, on 80s. He tried to explain to Crystal the, the, uh, the, the, the meaning of the ending of Prince of Darkness. Oh, you can't. Good, good, good luck. Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I said, oh, just stop, Jerry. Come I'll on. bet. I bet he doesn't end with F U when he's talking to Crystal, but no. me. Oh, oh, I bet yeah. he doesn't. I bet he doesn't. All right. <laughs> you might deserve it, though. I'm just I, oh, no. I <laughs> we right. love you, Jerry. We love you. Jerry. Yeah, I love you, Jerry. Oh, that, that's true. All right. We should wrap this up. If you're listening, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you've been enjoying this, and I hope you've been enjoying it for the past uh, year where we've kind of switched over to video, and you can see our faces and our goofy-ass reactions and maybe some of the cool stuff we have sitting behind and and Jeff's light down there in the hallway, which is awful damn spooky. Just saying. Um, <laughs> but if you are doing so, thank you so much. And if you'd like to help us out, it's really easy to do. And it's free. Hit the subscribe button or subscribe on the, on the, if you're listening to the podcast and share with a friend. Those two yeah. simple things would do wonders and we appreciate it much. If you want to get a little bit more involved, you can hit the like button 
and the bell to get notified. And le- we'd love to hear some comments. As you, uh, we're going to try to do more of that. Uh, reading the rate comments. us on iTunes. Do rate it on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we also want to take a quick moment. I think we can. Um, let's see if I yes to uh, thank our patrons who, uh, without their patronage, we wouldn't be able to do not only the decades of horror series but uh, Heroes of Droids. We've been yeah. covering Wandavision lately, and that's been a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, horror News Radio, and of course, Gruesome Magazine. Who's that uh, Jeff guy? Uh, yeah, it's it's Jeff. It's Jeff in quotations. <laughs> There are so many people named Jeff. He just put one of them in there. Jeff's, it's everybody, all the Jeffs I know are patrons. Every Jeff. (laughs) The funny thing would be if his name was actually just... There's only one black hole alien, really. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) His name was just Jeff, and he just put the quotes in there to make us like, huh, I wonder... That'll throw him off the trail. Yeah. It could be be Jeff Jeff. Jeff Jeff. Jeff Jeff. Double Jeff. All right, before we give away everything, uh, let's say good night. Good night. Good night, folks. Gruesome Magazine.